Joining us now for a look at the politics of jobs is Democratic strategist Steve McMahon in our Washington bureau and Republican strategist Ed Rollins here with me in New York. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. You. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing just fine. Steve, I'll begin with you. Let's talk about these nasty economic numbers out there. In your mind, how does the president make an effective case that he deserves a second term? Well, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that the numbers are good news for the president. I don't think they would say that in the White House either. But I do think that the president has a case for a second term based on what he inherited, what he did, the growth in the economy to date. And it hasn't been perfect. It hasn't been a straight line up. But uh, two million jobs have been created since he became president of the United States. And this was no doubt a bad report and it disappointed everybody in the White House. But the question at the end of the day is going to be whether or not people feel like the economy is getting better around Election Day. President Reagan went through this, and Ed can tell you about that, because he ran a great re-election campaign. And Ronald Reagan was elected with, with unusually high unemployment across America because people felt like things were getting better. And at well, the Ed, end of the day, that's what this president needs. Ed, let me bring you into this. If you were advising one of the Republican presidential candidates right now, what would you tell him or her to do? Uh, well, I certainly wouldn't be against job creation. I'd be out there talking every day about how, uh, by being more fiscally conservative, we can create more jobs and make people in the business community and reinvest a lot of the money that they're sitting there. No one wishes the president ill will on this particular front. We need to get Americans back to work. But at the end of the day, people are going to make a judgment over the four years, the trillions of dollars that have been spent under his stewardship, does it deserve four more years? I think people still like this president. I don't think people basically think he's a leader at this point in time. When you look at the Republican candidates who are already out there, who do you think is best suited to attack the president well, on I think, that front? I think, I think, first of all, I, I think Romney now is, a, is, is perceived as the front runner, and he's a business, former businessman and a successful one. But I think someone will come out of the social uh, conservative side, uh, sort of the role that Mike Huckabee might have had if he would have run, and that may be Mrs. Bachman, that may be uh, uh, Senator Pawlenty. Uh, you know, I think at this point in time, we can't tell. A year from now, we'll know. Who the, who the front runner is and who's the chaser. Steve, when you look across uh, the, the field there, in this case looking at the Republicans, who's the most, most formidable candidate out there? Well, I think Ed's right. I think he's handicapped it correctly. Uh, Mitt Romney has some credibility because he's a former governor, he's a former businessman, and, uh, and he you know, was a moderate when he was a governor of Massachusetts. He's also somebody, however, who, who, who ran businesses by cutting people and laying them off, so I'm not sure that's exactly what folks are looking for right now. And he's going to be challenged by somebody on the right, which is going to drag him to the right and make him a little bit less attractive to the middle mm -hmm. as a result. So I think that, you know, there's a long way to go. And this is a marathon, not a sprint. The president understands that. I think the Republicans are going to find that the road to the White House is, is as treacherous as the road to economic recovery. And I think you're seeing that a little bit already. But the Steve, Republicans in the House, I'm let, sorry. Let me, ask you this, but, but very, House, Steve, let me ask you very quickly, how vulnerable do you think the president is at this point? Well, I think the president is vulnerable because of the economy, but I think he's not vulnerable on a, on a lot of other measures. As Ed pointed out correctly, Americans still like this president a lot. And there's a number in the survey that's very important, and that is, does this person care about people like me? Two-thirds of Americans believe President Obama cares about th them and people like them. And with the Republicans in Washington trying to dismantle Medicare and, and make Medicaid a block grant, I don't think that they're helping their Republican nominee very much. Ed, let me ask you, in 1992, the Clinton campaign mantra was, it's the economy stupid. Should the Republicans use that strategy this well, time around? Well, whether we use it or not, it's going to be the economy stupid. And the critical thing about re-elections, it's, it's about the incumbent. Uh, no Republican's going to beat him alone. He has to basically be dragged down by his ineffectiveness uh, on, on getting people back to work again. Okay. Ed Rollins, Thank here you. in New York. Steve McMahon in Washington. Thank, Thank you both. You. We appreciate it. Thank you.